So it's been about two and a half years since I picked up the Surface Pro 3, and that was my introduction to the world of Windows. Before that, I was completely embedded in the Apple ecosystem. It takes time to get used to a new operating system, and so I've compiled these 10 tips, 10 things that I wish I knew before I started that might help you if you're thinking about switching to Windows. And I think with what they're doing with touch screens and what you can do with the hardware and some of the cool things that are coming out, this is a pretty good time to be looking at a Windows computer. So tip number one is go cold turkey. And what I mean by this is set your Mac aside, close it up, grab your new Windows computer and just use that for at least a week. I guarantee that the first day or two are going to be frustrating. There are so many little things that are different and at first they don't seem that different, but when you start to dive in, a lot of your productivity is going to go down at first. But if you're constantly jumping back to your Mac to do something easily, you're just going to rely on it. It's gonna become a crutch and you're not going to ever really fully embrace Windows. I had a friend and he went the other way around. He was in the PC world for eight Ages, and then he switched over to the Mac and it drove him nuts. He couldn't figure out where any of his shortcuts were. He didn't understand why things were done differently here and there. And what really drove him nuts was the fact that his mouse always scrolled backwards. But after a couple days, maybe a week or two, he loved his Mac and he still loves his Mac. But I think when you first jump in, just understand that your productivity is going to take a dive for a couple days and then as you get used to it, you're going to start to discover, you know, all the little hidden things and settings in Windows that make it good to use. Number two is you should try going keyboard free. If you're a designer or illustrator, one of the things that probably really attracts you to some of the new Windows hardware are these touch screens and using a pen. And Windows 10 is designed to be used completely without a keyboard. I think a lot of the productivity you're gonna get from Windows comes with a keyboard, but there are some apps that will help you go keyboard free. I use this little one it is called toolbar creator it's not the prettiest thing and it doesn't have a ton of options but it does give me a lot of on-screen shortcuts that help me replace that keyboard if you want to go for something a little higher end I would recommend tablet pro it's in the Windows Store and it does a lot of the same things but there are a lot more settings and features included in that one speaking of going keyboard free number three is you should turn off tablet mode on some tablets like my surface when I flip the keyboard around what ends up happening is it automatically wants to convert Windows 10 to something called tablet tablet mode. The idea behind tablet mode isn't a bad one, it's this idea that Windows was built to be used with keyboards, so let's make a mode that makes it easier to tap on things and it changes around some of the features and settings. The only problem here is that if you're learning a new operating system, having that operating system, you know, shift the rules underneath you in the middle of the game is kind of frustrating. So I would say learn one operating system at a time and turn off tablet mode. In your settings, go to system and then go to tablet mode and and then select this option, the one that says, don't ask me and don't switch. And you're done. Number four is go get the WinTab drivers. When something isn't working right in Windows the way you expect it to, nine times out of 10, it's because you don't have the proper drivers installed. This took me a little while to get used to, this idea that some applications are dependent on other programs in order to work properly, and they're not always the best in the world at telling you what you need to run your app. What the WinTab drivers do, especially if you're a Surface owner, is it allows your new fancy pen to work with older programs and give that pen the pressure sensitivity and some of the features you expect. Even though the programs you're using now might not need those drivers, it's probably not a bad idea to just go out and get them. Eventually, you might need those. And you save yourself the headache down the road. And number five is check the Windows Store first. There are a million Windows applications out there. If you want a new email client, there are literally like 80 of them. The only catch is, is that 70 of them are garbage. Part of the reason is there's so many Windows apps that date back decades. And even though you can find a ton of good apps that aren't in the Windows Store, I find that the stuff that is in the Windows Store is newer and tends to be kept up to date. Which brings me to number six. If you do go outside the Windows Store, be careful when you're installing the program not to click next, 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 next. Oftentimes when I'm installing apps, I don't care about the details. I just want to get through the process as quickly as possible. But a lot of Windows apps that are out there are going to try to install other cruft that you don't need. This goes for drivers as well. For example, if you try to install Java, it's going to try to install some other goofy thing with it. Sometimes it's antivirus software. Sometimes it's like a toolbar for Internet Explorer. But anyway, nine times out of ten, you just don't want that stuff. So making sure you're only installing what you mean to install is a good idea. This is all sounding a little bit dangerous. Do I need antivirus software? Well, glad you asked. That's number seven. No, do not download 
any antivirus software. I think some antivirus software is worse than actually getting a virus. It's running in the background, it sucks up system resources, it's always asking you to pay them to upgrade, it's just obnoxious. And the good news here is that Windows comes with something called Windows Defender. I find that if you're surfing safe, not downloading torrents, or going to goofy sites, you're probably going to be okay. In my two and a half years using Windows, I've only gotten one virus, and that's when I tried to download something called Paint Tool Sci, and ugh, still kind of mad about that. Number eight is get to know your settings. There are a ton of settings in Windows 10, and so it's worth diving in as soon as you get your computer and just seeing what's in there. Oftentimes, you'll find things that kind of throw you for a loop or get on your nerves or things that you can adjust in the settings. For example, on my Surface keyboard, if you just tap lightly, it registers as a click. In the first day or so that I had the computer, it was driving me nuts because I couldn't figure out why my cursor was never where I expected it to be. And there it is in the settings. I can just toggle it on off and everything works the way I expect it to. And while you're poking around the settings, also check out Windows Ink. There's a lot of features in there that are like based around the pen technology and touch technology of a tablet. This is where you start to dive into a lot of those little features that you're just not going to find on a Mac. Number nine, download a program called Seer, S-E-E-R. There was one feature on my Mac that I just couldn't live without, and that is, is when I have a file highlighted, if I tap the space bar, I can preview it. Whether it's a Photoshop file, an image, a movie, it's fantastic. Now in your little Windows Explorer window, you can actually have a preview mode where you can see like previews of images and things like that, but you can't preview a movie file there. Uh, you can't see what a photo is in a Photoshop file. It just gives you an icon telling you it's a Photoshop file. But Seer duplicates that Mac functionality where when you tap the space bar, you can preview something and it will play that video. It will show you what's in that Photoshop file. It's a, it's a huge time saver. And if that's a feature you use on the Mac, you need to check this out on the PC as well. And number 10, Take yourself some screenshots. Also, as a designer, I took a lot of screenshots and how you do it on a PC is you hit the print screen button on your keyboard. However, on the Surface Pro, I don't have that button. There is an app that comes with Windows 10 called the Snipping Tool, and that's everything you're going to need for screenshots. You can grab the entire screen or just a portion of it, or you can copy it to your clipboard, or you can save it as a file. Basically, all your functionality is gonna be included in this little app. So that's a lot of stuff, but what's key to just understanding is just having a little bit of patience when you get started and, and getting used to those settings, getting used to your keyboard shortcuts that you've learned, getting used to some of the new features that you're going to find in Windows that are going to help you out. There's a lot to love. It just takes a little time to understand it all. If you have any comments, let me know down below, or you can always hit me up on Twitter. I'm going to be streaming this week. Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time over on Twitch, so check that out. And of course, as always, if you find these videos useful, consider contributing on Patreon. That's all I got for this week. I'll see you later.